بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال تبارك وتعالى كما ورد في سورة الإسراء وقضى ربك ألا تعبد إلا إياه وبالوالدين إحسانا إما يبلغن عندك الكبر أحدهما أو كلاهما فلا تقل لهما أف ولا تنهرهما وقل لهما قولا كريما رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لسان يفقه قولي وجعل لي وزيرا من أهلي آمين يا رب العالمين I want to speak to you about rights of parents and there are multiple reasons why actually I selected this topic right after Ramadan is over but before I can even start giving reflections on these three ayat Surah Al-Isra or Surah Bani Israel ayat 23, 24 and 25 I just want to actually start with few disclaimers because when you are talking about the social aspect of Islam, rights of parents, rights of husbands, rights of wife, rights of kids, um, one of the misunderstandings which we can have is that man khatib or imam is very idealistic himself. No, we all are struggling. Wallahi, we all are struggling. Don't idolize your khatib, neither demonize your khatib or imam. I'm struggling, you are struggling, we all are in the same boat. May Allah SWT make us all obedient, son and daughter. I mean, Ya Rab. So don't idolize me. Don't idolize me. Second, whatever I'm going to share, whether from the words of Allah or from the examples of daily life, this is for you and your parent, not for you and your kids. Because it's very easy if you are in that middle phase of your life and you have your kids and you have your parents, you, when you listen to the ayat, ihsana, you will immediately record that and text your kids. <laughs> that see, فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ This is what Allah says about your parents. No, this is for your parents. Don't have that, don't have that victim mentality which we have all the time. That Islam is for someone else. No, no, Islam is for you. Don't ignore, don't put that filter that will ignore you. So that's another disclaimer I would actually add. And third and last disclaimer before we can start. That whatever we are going to discuss is actually for everyone regardless of gender, whether you are men or women. Because generally when we speak about the rights of parent, we focus more on men. Especially when our daughters are married, we don't pay attention that still they have to give rights of the parents. So when we are talking about the rights of parents, it's both for men and women, before and even after the marriage. This is extremely important. Okay, now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Surah Al-Isra, ayat number 23, Your Lord, your Rabb, your Master have decided that you would not worship, you won't worship anything except Him. وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا and you will be extra nice to your parents. Well, I, I, first time I exposed to this, I was exposed to this ayah around 18 years ago, 18 years ago. And from that time I used to think that there are five places in the Quran, five places in the Quran at least, in my limited knowledge, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned his right that you won't worship anything except him. And immediately after his right, Allah says, you have to be nice to parents. You have to do ihsan with parents. I used to think that why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving such a high status, high honor to parents, that right after his right, Allah is mentioning be nice to your parents. And what can be the practical manifestation or rationalization for this? And I started looking at the books of tafsir and I actually found six reasons for that. There can be multiple, but as a student of tafsir, I found six reasons. And I just want to share that with you before we can go deeper in the ayah. Again, what we are exploring, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention the rights of parents right after mentioning his rights. Such a big honor for the parents, right? Why, what are the reasons? First, who is our creator? Allah. In the ghaib, in this unseen world. In the seen world, in the biological sense, we came out of the body of our mom, through our dad, right? So in the unseen world, who is our Khaliq? Allah. In the seen world, there's something. We can notice that. Second, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you finite or infinite favors. 
tuhsuha. Allah gave us infinite favors. Infinite favors. Within the human being, who gave us infinite favors? Our parents. Before even we came into this dunya, ask your mom. Allahu Akbar. There's, there's a thing we can actually use the analogy. Third, third. Allah gave us infinite favors, but even then we take Allah's favor for granted. Yes or no? Yes. We are not grateful to Allah as we should be. And similarly, within human beings, our parents gave us infinite favors, but we take that favor for granted. Allahu Akbar. Your friend, if he will going to give you a ride, you will text him 10 times. Thanks, brother. Your dad is doing this from the day one. Your mom is having sleepless night before even you came into the dunya because of you. We take their favors for granted also. Subhanallah. And this fourth, this sequence, rights of Allah and then rights of parents also tells us the sequence of obedience. Whom we should obey first if there is a conflict. Subhanallah. Fifth, fifth reason why Allah subhanahu mentioned right after his right, rights of parents. Ibn Ashur actually brought this up. This is very important in the modern world we are living in. He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to take care of our parents according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is very important. Allah wants us to fix our aqidah. You have to worship only Allah and then take care of your parents. Because if you'll remove Allah, if you'll remove let Allah-centric worldview, God-centric worldview, then you will come up with your own definition how to be nice to your parents. And that's not acceptable. You might just go two weeks from now, you will have Mother's Day, take selfie with your mom, post on a Facebook or Instagram, and you will think you are a nice son or daughter, and leave her in the old house. We are so arrogant, we won't accept that we are not nice kids. But according to Allah, you have to be nice. That's why worship Him alone and then be nice to your parents. Allahu Akbar. Make your worldview God center. You don't have to be nice to parents just for the sake of the parents. You have to be nice to parents for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is very important. And sixth, last but not the least. <coughs> parents have the high virtue. Our Jannah is lying under the feet of the mother. Our father is the mid-door of Jannah as said by Ibn Majah in Ibn Majah hadith by Rasulullah sallallahu But by giving service to them. But if you are not good to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This one virtue might not enough to take you to Jannah. You have to have proper sequence in mind. Don't worship anything except Allah and then be nice to parents. Subhanallah. Just one sequence tells us so many things. This is the power of the Quran. Now come back to this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says... Be nice to parents. Be extra nice to parents. I will come in a minute. What does Ihsan mean here? Then Allah says, If one of your parents reach to the old age and they are with you, or both of them, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning Ihsan, especially when they are old? We have to do ihsan, we have to be nice to our parents all the time, right? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is emphasizing here, especially old age. By the way, old does not mean just relatively old, 40, 50 years old, when your father and mother are still paying for your college fees and tuition fees, and paying for your car and house and cell phone. Then there is every reason why you will do ihsan with your parents. You are stuck with them. You need them. No, no, no. Allah says al-kibr. When they reach to that age, when they are financially dependent on you, when they become completely emotional, they don't understand the logic of anything. And whatever is that age, just put your numbers. In that age, when they get irritated very quickly, very prematurely, at that age you have to do ihsan with them. This is extremely, extremely important. You know, I was thinking why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used this language. That you have to do ihsan with your parents. Especially in the old age, whether with one of them or both of them. Why Allah used this language? Whether with one of them or both of them. I found a scholarly response to this. That if your parents are in old age, 
not all the time you will be fortunate that both of them will be alive. That's what Allah says, when they reach to old age, whether one or both of them, that there are chances when they will reach to that age, old age, that you might lose one of them. Allahu Akbar. And even though one door of Jannah is closed for you, but there is other door of Jannah waiting for you. Just go and earn your Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the ability to earn the Jannah. Ameen Ya Rabbi. Interestingly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the language Indaka and Al-Kibar, these two conditions. Imma yablughanna indaka al-kibara. If your old parents are with you, then you have to do ihsan with them. Think about it. These two conditions, with you and old. With you and old age. If our parents are living in a different country, in a different state, it's relatively easy to do ihsan, right? You talk to them on WhatsApp. If conversation goes rough, you'll say, Abba, I can't hear you, can't hear you. Hang up. But if they are with you, and they should be with you, unless there is a need, then in their old age, they might react in a very emotional way because you are young, you are hard-blooded, thinking completely out of logic, rational, intellectual. They are old, completely emotions. They might be in your house as an old father and old mother, and they will say, you don't know how to raise your kids. You don't know how to discipline your kids. Allahu Akbar. You don't know how to clean your house and how to clean your car. And sometimes they will be sarcastic towards you. Remember that time. That this is the test of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمْ Don't say anything. Don't express anything out of anger. This is very hard. You will feel bad. It's natural. But do not bring it up on your tongue. Out of respect what they have done to you. You know, many times you will say, my dad don't understand when he's 70 years old. My mom don't understand she's 65 years old. They won't understand at this age. <laughs> they are in the age of old age, second childhood. They won't change. It is you who should change your expectation from them. A man is 70 years old. What would you expect from him? He will change his attitude at this age? You should change your expectation. You should tell your family how to deal with your old parents. Our problem in the modern world, obviously this is a separate topic, I don't want to go into the tangents, is that we are living in a child-centered parenting. That entire family, including parents, should change to confirm the feelings of the child. Child should not change. We are living in that environment. Quran is telling us parents have a responsibility, but parents have rights also. Child should change also. But unfortunately, we have removed God, we have removed Akhara from the modern and postmodern world, and here's the disaster. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us proper understanding. Ameen, Ya Rab. How to do Ihsan with your parents? By the way, Ihsan means multiple things. Ihsan means beauty. The way you are dealing with your parents have to be beautiful. It means excellence. The way you are dealing with your parents should be based on excellence. It also means perfection. It also means you are doing something with proper attention, proper focus coming from prophetic hadith. And then you are doing something extra more than you are required. That's also Ihsan. You are giving something extra more than expected from you. This is Ihsan. So, وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانَ cannot only mean you have to be just nice with parents. Every kid is expected to be nice to parents. You have to be extra nice to parents if this conveys the proper meaning. Give them a random phone call. Give them a random text message. Dad, I'm missing you. Mom, I love you. Make those emojis. Love emojis, heart emojis. Young people, they are for your parents. Just pay attention to that. <laughs> You know, um, give them a gift. Don't look at the value of the price. They will look at the thought which have come into your mind that my son and daughter have brought something. Consult with them. If you have started working, call your father, call your mother. Then I'm getting this job offer. Should I accept it? Even if they don't know anything about job market, they will appreciate that you are taking their advice. 
I'm planning to buy this house. I'm planning to buy this car. Should I do that? Even if they don't know anything about real estate, that's fine. You're not getting the point if you are going into the technical discussion. Just give them time. Give them time. Listen to their stories. You know, many times when you are with your old parents, they will share same stories 10 times, which they haven't shared, which they have shared, let's say, five years ago also. And every time they will share, they will share with the same excitement. Subhanallah. And sometime as an ungrateful kid, you will show this to your parents. Abba, I know this already. You shared this so many times. Don't do that. Don't do that. Pay the same attention which you have paid in the first time. Because when you were young, when you were an infant, when you were saying the same word 10 times a day, your parents were enjoying this. And now it's a payback time. You cannot be patient with them. Do ihsan with your parents. You know, we all want our kids to respect us, right? Don't we? We all want our kids to respect us, right? Allah says, Al jazaul ihsan illa li ihsan. The compensation of ihsan is only ihsan. If you are nice to your parents, if you are doing ihsan with your parents, if you are not screaming at your mom, if you are not yelling at your dad and your kids are looking at you, then when they will grow young and you will go into their shoes, then they will going to do the same thing what you have done with your parents because they have seen how adults should deal with their parents. But if you will scream all the time to your mom, you will get mad all the time to your dad. Then guess what your kids are learning? That this is the way we should talk to our parents. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us muhsineen. Ameen ya Rabb. فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ Then Allah continues. Allah says after this, do not say uff to them. Subhanallah, we can speak hours and hours on this and these three ayat, but I will just rush it now. فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ Second instruction after Ihsan, you do not say uff to them. What is uff? This is the least word of contempt. Imam Raghib al Asfahani says, you know our nails sometimes have a dirt. So this, when you clip the nails and you throw it, that dirt will go away. They would call it as uff. And then later on this word was coined as uff to your parents, least word of contempt. So disgusting thing. So do not say anything negative, disgusting thing which shows your frustration. Do not say to your parents. And mind you, this is old parents. They are going to make you angry. They will going to make you mad. They won't change necessarily. Who have to change? Allah is saying you. فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا By the way, one of the famous um, Ibn Abbas, one of the famous Mufassir, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, his student Mujahid, he was asked, what does it mean فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ Can you explain with an example that don't say uff to your parents? He said, when you see your old parents, having urinary inconsistency and because of that if they are using toilets and some drops of urine you will see in your house then فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ do not say uff to them at that time because they have done the same thing when you were young Sometimes your PB, your poop would come out of your diaper. But they would not show frustration. They would clean it. It's a payback time. They are in second childhood. Kids need a stroller, your parents need wheelchair. They, it's a second childhood. Do ihsan with them. When your mother asks you for a glass of water, don't just make those expressions, ah, it's an NFL Super Bowl is going on. No. That's ah is off actually. This is modern day off. So basically do not show, express any frustration. This is our Islam. If you want to try this modern parenting technique or rights of the parents, we have seen the disaster in this modern and postmodern culture where kids have left the parents and they are just waiting for their death. We should be proud of our religion and our proud of our teachings. And then Allah says, Wakullahuma kawlan karima. You know, if you ask any Arab brother or sister, may Allah give us all the ability to learn basic Arabic. Say Ameen. 
Wakullahuma. What does Wakullahuma mean? Say, talk to them. <laughs> talk to them. Al Amr yaktadi al wujub. Let's just talk to them. Give time to your parents. Just one minute a call on text. Just talk to them. Wakullahuma. Wakullahuma kawlan karima. And talk to them in a generous and a noble way. Then just move on. By the way, when you're talking to them, don't multitask. Don't use cell phone. We all have this bad habit. It's starting with me. When they are talking to you, don't use cell phone. Just put your cell phone inside. When they are texting you and other friends have texted you, respond to them first before responding to your other friends. Then Allah says, And lower to them wing of humility. You know, this um, is Taswir al Fanni fil Quran, artistic depiction in the Quran. Janaha dhulli min ar Rahman. If you see the tafsir of this, in Arabic, they would say Janah is the wings, wings of the bird. Janah al Tayr, wings of the bird. So, like bird will lower its wings to protect its family, like a mother bird will lower its wing to protect its family. Now it's your turn because you are young. And your parents are, parents are old. They are in the age where the calamity of old age have hit them. And you have to, you have to lower your wings to protect them with their old age. And the calamities which bring, which, which, which usually comes from the old age. You have to protect them in the, in the time when they are extremely weak. And you are strong. Because they did the same thing when you were young. They were protecting you. You know, and you don't have to do this out of burden. Mina zahma. You have to do this mina rahma. You have to do this out of rahma. You know, many times you will say, Oh, I can't do this. I can't commit because I have an old parents to take care. This should not be the tone of liability. This should be the tone of honor. Alhamdulillah. No, no. I have a commitment with my parents. Alhamdulillah. I have to take care of them because Allah has actually given me this responsibility. Tone of rahma, not tone of burden. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us dua. Some sahabas, they would ask this dua in every attahiyat. Subhanallah. The dua is, وَقُلْ رَبِّ الْحَمْهُمَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَقُلْ رَبِّ رَحْمُهَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِ صَغِيرًا Allah teaches us dua that you should say after doing all this Oh Allah have mercy on my parents as they brought me up when I was young if you think about this dua You were first asked not to say, oh, talk to them, take care of them in their old age. You did everything. And then Allah says, make dua for them. You will say, I did already everything. Because your parents did the same thing when you were young. They did their best to raise you. And then they made dua to Allah because they wanted to see you flourish in life. Didn't they? And now it's your turn. You have to do everything. What you can. And then, in the end, you have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on our parents. Ameen, Ya Rabb. Final thing. See, subhanAllah, Quran, that's the difference between Islam and different religion. Islam doesn't, doesn't give only the idealistic picture. Islam also gives the realistic picture. But Imam asks, if you don't know, my parents are op oppressive. You don't know my parents are abusive. We are not talking about exceptions. We are talking about general rule. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says after this, immediately after this, look at the sequence. Come Jamila Hazal Kalam. Allah says, Rabbukum a'lamu bima fi nufusikum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is well aware of what is in your heart. If your parents are abusive, if your parents are oppressive, if they say something out of oppression to your spouse, then you should go. You should not support the oppression. 
kiss your mother's forehead, kiss your dad's forehead. Say, I love you, mom. I love you, dad, but I cannot support oppression. You can still not be disrespectful with them, but you do not support oppression. This is the balance which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave. And if your parents get mad at you, Rabbukum a'lamum bima fi nufusikum. Allah knows what is in your heart. Sometimes you have to do this. You deal with your old parents. But again, disrespectful is not okay. But you have to be firm and stern because might, sometimes they might be doing something which is harmful for them. That's like a diabetic father or mother wants to eat sugar. And you have to be stern to say no to them. That's fine. Rabbukum a'lamu bima fi nufusikum. Allah knows what is in your heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the ability to become nice parents inshallah ta'ala and forgive our shortcomings inshallah ta'ala. Bismillah alhamdulillah salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa ala amma ba'd Just final things, um, even though it's a big topic What to do if you're really unfortunate, just final two things actually What to do if you're really unfortunate, if you're both of your parents have passed away Rahimahumullahi ta'ala, what to do at that time Just quickly, give charity on their behalf Because as proven from the say hadith Paying off their debt, if they have any debt Make dua for them. There are many hadiths which speaks about that your dua will reach to them in terms of elevating their status. Be nice to their friends and relatives. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, son of Umar ibn Khattab, after his death, he was walking one day and he saw um, one man, random man, which uh, Ibn Umar's friends could not recognize who he is. Ibn Umar immediately recognized. He talked, spoke to him. He gave him his turban first. And then he was riding in a donkey. He gave him his donkey also as a gift. So his friends were asking, why did you do this? Because now you don't have anything to go back. He says, I'm just trying to be generous and nice to him because his father was friend of my father. And I heard this from Rasulullah Allahu Akbar. He says, the best act of kindness is for a man to honor his father's friend after he has died. So I'm just honoring him, subhanAllah. So just try to... Be nice with their friends and family, inshallah, and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us all proper wisdom, inshallah ta'ala. Why I selected this topic? You know the famous hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa where he climbed the member, he said, Ameen thrice, and he conveyed the message to the companions, why, what happened? That Jibreel came to him one day, and he made dua. First dua, that whoever gets the month of Ramadan, Jibreel is asking this dua, alayhi salam, whoever gets the month of Ramadan, he sees the month of Ramadan, come and go, come and go. And he did not able to seek proper forgiveness in that month of forgiveness, then he should be a loser. Say Ameen, Rasulullah, and Rasulullah Sallallahu said Ameen on this dua. Can you imagine if Rasulullah said Ameen, Jibreel is asking dua, is there any way this dua can be rejected? Allahu Akbar. Ramadan is over, right? But then the second dua. Second dua, whoever, ha whoever have his old parents, whether one of them or both of them. And by giving service to them, khidma to them, he does not earn Jannah, he's a loser. Say Ameen, O Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Rasulullah said Ameen. Ramadan is over, my brothers and sisters. But your parents are at your home. Give service to them. Whether Shawwal, Ramadan, Muharram, Zidqad, Zil Hajjah, inshallah Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will actually make you enter Jannah through them, inshallah ta'ala. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us that honor. Ameen, Ya Rab. Allahumma ansuri al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allahumma ghazul man qazal adina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa la taj'alna ma'ahum. Allahumma la taj'alna zamman illa ghafarta wa la hamman illa farrajta wa la dhinan illa qadayta wa la hajad min hawaij al-dunya wa al-akhara illa qadayta ya Rahman Rahimin. Rabbi irhamhum kama rabbawna sigara. Rabbi irhamhum kama rabbawna sigara. Rabbi irhamhum kama rabbawna sigara. وصلى الله على النبي الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الله